ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في الخلق والأمر ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله المبعوث إلى الأسرد والأحمر المنعوت بشرح صدر ورفع ذكر وصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين هم خلاصة العرب العرباء وخير الخلائق بعد الأنبياء أما بعد فيا أيها الناس واحد الله فإن توحيد رأس الطاعات واتقوا الله فإن تقوى ملاك الحسنات وعليكم بالسنة فإن السنة تهدي إلى لطاعة ومن أطاع الله ورسوله فقد رشد وأهدى وإياكم والبدعة فإن البدعة تهدي إلى المعصية ومن يعص الله ورسوله فقد ضل وغوى وعليكم بالإحسان فإن الله يحب المحسنين ودعوه فإنه مجيب الداعين واستغفروه يمدلكم بأموالهم وبنين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book, in his kalam provides to us very tangible, very practical advice in living the greatest experience as a human being in being able to have a fulfilling experience in our life here on earth and in this dunya and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided a role model, provided a template, a blueprint in the form of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is to, who was described by his own companions, by his wife radiallahu ta'ala anha as kana khuluqu bil Qur'an kana al Qur'an yamshi kaannahu al Qur'an yamshi that it was as if he was a Qur'an that was walking and talking that his character and the way he lived his life was the book of Allah this entire you know week we've been spending time talking about, contemplating, reflecting on finding an example within the life of the Prophet and this is what I wanted to focus on here today, kind of bring it together, bring it together. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He has provided for you, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ It has been provided for you. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this lamb, this is for the benefit. It is for your own good and your own benefit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed for you fi Rasulillah. And the word fi in the Arabic language prepositions are very powerful rhetorical tools. Contained within the Messenger of Allah. It is completely contained within, within Him. You don't have to look outside. And what will you find once you immerse yourself into the life of Rasulullah? Uswatun Hasana, the ultimate role model. And when we adhere, what is the consequence of that ultimate role model? That mercy for all of mankind. Guidance for all of mankind. Ya ayyuhal nabiyu inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadhiran wa da'iyan ila Allahi bi idnihi wa sirajan muniran. That being a witness for people, being somebody who brings good news to people, being someone who out of concern and care and consideration, love and affection is warning people about what is bad for them. Calling people to Allah, becoming a means of people connecting and finding their relationship with Allah. And being an illuminating force in a world that is filled with darkness. That is what we find within the example of the Prophet ﷺ. And what we have to understand is that not only was that who the Prophet ﷺ was, but when we adhere to his example, that's what we have the potential to become. We have to see our own potential. That is what, that is, what is at stake. We all have the potential to become that. And I wanted to share one incident, one gem from the life of the Prophet ﷺ that really summarizes all of this. It encapsulates this. Abu Yusuf, Abdullah bin Salam, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was a very knowledgeable man of the Jewish tribes. He was a rabbi of his people. He says that when the Prophet of Allah ﷺ came to al Madina to Munawwara, the illuminated blessed city of Medina, and he arrived there, there was a, the entire town was a buzz. Everybody was talking about the fact that Muhammad Rasulullah has arrived. So he says, I went. Everybody was rushing, everybody was going. You know when everyone is going, when people were coming here for the retreat on Wednesday, when are you going, when are you leaving, when are you leaving? So he said everybody was going and trying to figure out that they were going to go and see him. 
believer and non-believer alike. And he says, I went. And when I walked in and I laid eyes on the face of the Prophet ﷺ, I distinguished him from the rest of the people. Araftu bi'anna wajhahu laysa biwajhin kathir. That I recognized from his face that this was not the face of a liar. This was not the face of a liar. Now we oftentimes mention this, that this is part of the mu'ajizah, the miracle of the Prophet ﷺ, that you can see that it was the truth when you laid eyes on him, but there's some deeper nuance to this. And he says, أَوَّلُ شَيْءٍ سَمِعْتُهُ تَكَلَّمَ بِهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. The first thing I heard him say was, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ When the Prophet ﷺ saw that people had congregated, and people were here, and the legacy of the Prophet ﷺ speaks to us today, that the first thing I heard him say was, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ O oh, mankind, O oh, humanity, O oh, people, أَفْشُ السَّلَامِ وَأَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامِ وَصِلُوا الْأَرْحَامِ وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ لِيَانْ تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ بِسَلَامِ He said that, O oh, mankind, O oh, people, spread peace, spread salam, give salams to everyone and everyone, anyone. Go around greeting people, giving peace to people. And this says every word, you know, one of the, one of the tragedies of our time is that we don't appreciate the depth and the beauty of the Qur'an, and similarly, even more so, we don't appreciate the depth and the beauty of the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was given this gift by God. So spreading peace has a more applicable, more direct, more explicit meaning. That go around greeting people. And that's a very powerful lesson that the Prophet ﷺ was telling them that embody good character, good conduct, be friendly with people, present a smiling face to people, greet people, young and old, rich and poor, those who you know and those whom you don't even know. That's what the Prophet ﷺ taught us to do. He said, give salam to those people that you know and those people that you don't know. And in fact, on the flip side, he said one of the signs of the day of judgment, the nearing of the hour, when evil will become predominant on the earth, one of the signs of that is that people will give salam to those whom they know, and they will not give salam to people that they don't know. And we have to assess our own character. Even here at, at, at this type of a setting, where we're all in close quarters with one another, we have this tendency to gravitate towards people that we have a personal connection with, that we know personally. But these are the opportunities. And the believer is one that generally, the believer's disposition, default position and disposition is one that they go around greeting, saying salam, welcoming, greeting each and every person. And this has a deeper meaning that be a force of peace, spread peace, Wherever you go, people should be able to take some salam from your salam. Be able to take peace from you. So the first thing the Prophet ﷺ emphasized in this hadith where he teaches us how to live like Muhammad ﷺ, is that first and foremost your character, how you interact with people, how you present yourself to people, what impression people walk away with when they interact with you, when they see you, when they talk to you. The second thing the Prophet ﷺ emphasized was ta'am, feed food. And again, what's very beautiful is the Prophet ﷺ did not designate. Typically in the Arabic language, there are some verbs that require an object, muta'addi, transitive. This verb is transitive, it requires an object. Feed food to whom? The Prophet ﷺ didn't specify. Feed food to everyone. And again, what does that mean? That share your food with people, break bread with people, with the people in your community, the people in your family, welcome people to come and sit with you and eat with you. Feed food to those who don't have food. Feed food to those people who are deprived, downtrodden, neglected, disenfranchised within society. A sense of social consciousness and awareness. A building of community is what the Prophet is emphasizing here. <coughs> And realizing that spreading of peace, not only for our words and our character, but even through the material means that Allah has given to us. The third thing the Prophet ﷺ emphasized was wasilul arham, that join family relations, maintain family relations. Family is at the core of our deen of Islam. When you read the Quran, you read the book of Allah. In ayah number 177 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah defines piety for us. 
ليس البر أن تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشيق والمغرب. Piety is not just rituals, turning your face towards the east or the west. Rather, piety is to believe in Allah, believe in the angels, believe in the scripture, believe in the messengers. And then he says, and maintain good family relations. It is at the core, we had a talk just this morning about that. It is at the core of Iman, of Islam, of this spiritual experience that we are all striving for. So he says, maintain good family relations. Wasilul arham. Wasallu billayni wa nasudiyam. And then fourthly and finally, the Prophet ﷺ emphasized, and at all costs, even if it requires you to make great personal sacrifices. Then let's talk about the first three things. You go out of your way, and that cuts into your time, your energy, to make sure that you talk to people, you greet people, you're friendly with people, you're accessible to people, available to people. Then on top of that, you go out of your way to build relationships with people in your community. You go out of your way, you sacrifice to then make sure that you're taking care of those that nobody else is looking after in society. Like the Prophet ﷺ, what was he praised for? <laughs> Lifting the downtrodden, giving to those who are deprived. And then on top of that, then you also invest a lot of time and energy and personal resources into maintaining good family relations. There's nothing left at the end of the day. On top of every, our own personal ambitions, our own personal tasks and things that we want to do. There's literally no time left. But we cannot use that as an excuse to fall weak in our relationship with Allah. The Prophet ﷺ mentions this at the end because if we think, accumulates to the end. Everything builds up to this final point. That even if you have to stay awake at night, you've been at it since 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. You're completely exhausted and fatigued. You don't have any ounce of energy left. But even then, if you have to wake up during the night and pray, and that's the only time you can get peace and quiet to pray to Allah, to make dua to Allah, to communicate with Allah, talk to Allah, then you do it even at that time of night. وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْهِ And pray throughout the night. Pray during the night time. وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامُ All people are asleep. And what will be the consequence of this? تَدَخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ بِسَلَامٍ You will enter into paradise with peace. And what's very beautiful about that, the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't just say enter into paradise. He said enter into paradise peacefully. You won't have any questioning, no reckoning, no accountability, no time that has to be done in the fire of hell to cleanse you, to purge you, so that you can now qualify to enter into the gardens of paradise. No free, open entry into the gardens of paradise, which is the ultimate goal that we all want to achieve. But the Prophet ﷺ is giving us here a blueprint, a layout, how to go about achieving that. And the four areas of our life the Prophet ﷺ emphasizes here are something we all have to take care of. That's what we're here to learn. That's, the, that's the, the core that we need to go back with. And we need to dedicate the rest of our lives to maintaining this. That is number one, our character. Our akhlaq, how we conduct ourselves. Number two is our sense of community, our engagement and involvement with society. Number three is the home and the family. And the fourth and the final, all the way at the core, is that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi is saying, never ever forget about your relationship with Allah. Spirituality. This is very tangible, very practical. And it might almost seem like it is a specific application of each, but that's how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi taught our deen to us. Didn't just teach us concepts, but he taught us exactly how to execute. And this is what we learn from the life of the Prophet ﷺ, that we will go to the gardens of paradise, but we won't go by ourselves. Then you work in the reverse order. These are the people that will go to enter into the gardens of paradise without any reckoning, without any questioning, without any difficulty or any trouble with their families, with their communities and societies, and with people that they won't even remember, but people will say, you, did a, you said a nice thing to me once. You smiled at me. You shook my hand. You said salam to me. You offered me something once, and that was enough to win my heart over. And th th this is the format that the Prophet ﷺ lays out. This is what we're here to achieve. بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الله.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة المتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد. So we were talking about this hadith and I mentioned something at the beginning I didn't elaborate upon. That Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he saw the Prophet he said I recognize that this was not the face of a liar. What made him feel that, that this was not the face of a liar? Aside from the natural glow and the beauty and the magnificence of the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu But what was it tangibly that made him realize and know for without a doubt that this is not the face of a liar? Because he heard the Prophet sallallahu saying these words, but he saw the Prophet sallallahu living by these words. That is something we can't ignore. The Prophet sallallahu didn't just say this, he didn't just claim this, he didn't just preach this, but he lived it. And that was a reality of it. And this, from the second Abdullah bin Salam, radiallahu ta'ala, who entered the company of the Prophet he saw all these things manifesting themselves in front of his very eyes. And he knew that this is not a liar. That is our responsibility. We have to understand that. What we take from this personally, we talked about. But at a greater level, at a bigger scope, at a bigger level, we have to be cognizant and aware of our responsibility. Somebody might be saying, brother, I'm here to just learn my deen. I'm still trying to figure out a way to pray five times a day. This is all new for me. That's fine. But even that person has to understand at some level your responsibility. On the first day of the retreat, we heard, we were told that we have been chosen and selected to be here. We have been chosen and selected to say, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. To know Allah, to know the Rasul, to know the Quran, to know Islam. We've been chosen. We've been selected, we bear a responsibility to represent this Iman, this Islam, this Ihsan to the best of our ability. And that representation will not be done through our words, but it will be done through our actions. How well we live this reality. And that's something that we must internalize at an individual and at a communal level. There's been a lot of talk. We have more at our disposal in terms of resources than we've ever had before. Whether it be the internet or publications or printing, money, resources, advertising, marketing. But we've made a huge mistake if we think Islam is an advertising or marketing campaign. That Islam is a PR stunt. That Islam is a photo op. We made a, we made a tragic mistake in error. But Islam is how we live our lives. How we greet people. How we interact with people. How engaged and involved and aware we are of what's going on in our society. How can you feed the poor if you don't even know who the poor are? It's impossible that we have what we have today. Where we look for a box labeled with zakah and we put it in that box. Rather than going, the sunnah of the Prophet was that these people are your friends and your neighbors and your community members. And you would go to them and help them. How can we join family relations? Maintaining family relations is a distant thing. We're here talking about repairing family relations. And then praying at night to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is not talking about our first prayer. The Prophet ﷺ is not saying that I didn't pray Fajr to Isha, and so therefore I'm combining all five salawat and making them up in the night when I finally get home. No, no, no. He's talking about praying five times a day, but then putting an extra time just because I want to be one-on-one -on -one with my Rabb. I want to be one-on-one -on -one with Allah. So there's a huge responsibility that we bear in terms of this as well. But the, the good news in that is anything and everything is difficult without the help of Allah and anything and everything is easy with the help of Allah. We have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on our side. Allah has guaranteed that He will facilitate this for us. He will make this possible for us. He didn't ask us to be perfect. He tried. To, he told us, He commanded us to try our best and when we come up short then we ask Allah to forgive us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill, will make up for our shortcomings and take our efforts beyond what we could have even imagined. So our message, our mission, our objective is to not only just learn about the Prophet ﷺ, but to understand who the Prophet ﷺ was, how he lived his life, and then to be able to live like the Prophet ﷺ lived, to be able to embody the life and the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, and just as he was that light, that beacon, that means of connecting people back to Allah, that source of khayr for the entire world, all of mankind, all of humanity, we need to, we will be able to achieve that same level. We'll be able to serve as a source of inspiration for people, as a means of connecting people to Allah, as a light and a beacon for all of mankind. 
And so from today, how do we begin by doing so? Start small and start easy. Say salam to every single person. You know, it's really interesting. It's really interesting, and I'm guilty of this as well, that how can you be in such close proximity with 150, 200 people for three days, and yet up till now not have said salam to some people? Maybe still not know some of their names, know who they are. We, we change that right now from after Salat to Jumu'ah. We go out of our way to say Salat. We make sure everyone's eaten before I've eaten. We make sure that if family is here, we've been so busy having fun with friends and other people that we've met, that we take time out to make sure family members are okay. Or if we are going back on Sunday, then we make sure that we are now going to dedicate some, de some quality time to those family members to make better with them. And not only are we praying five times a day here at the camp, but I'm going to steal away a couple of minutes here, a couple of minutes there, to spend some alone, quiet, personal time with Allah. Make some dhikr, make some tasbih, read some Quran, make some dua. But I'm going to start making some time for Allah. Very, very small, tangible, practical steps will continue to advance us in all these other areas. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to practice everything we've said and heard. Allahumma isa al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma insuri al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdibina wa ja'alna sababa li man ittada. Allahumma ayna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allahumma ahsina aqibatana fi l-umuni kulliha. Wa ajinna min khisi dunia wa adha bil akhira. Allahumma wafiqna lima tuhibu wa tarda. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala nabi al-kareem. Also remembering your du'as, all the people throughout the world who are suffering especially our brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Syria, in Bangladesh, in Burma, Afghanistan, Somalia, all over the world, wherever there are people suffering, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate their pain and suffering. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a means of their forgiveness in this life and their eternal bliss and success and happiness in the hereafter. قال الله عز وجل في كتابه المجيد إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنهاء عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة